Hello everybody. Today we are going to talk about the angry young man movement. Angry young man movement flourished in the 1950s in both the drama and novel. And the angry young man was a journalistic catchphrase. That means it is not a self-concerted movement. It is just a title given to them by journalists. The people involved in angry young men movement were all working class intellectuals who went to provincial universities and became frustrated with the post-war Britain. So the angry young men movement shows frustration, resentment, rebellion, irreverence. These people are impatient with tradition. These writers question the post-war reforms. They show vulgarity and a sulky resentment of the cultivated people. These are people who feel betrayed by the government. They have lost their educational opportunities. They are not able to build a good career. They are living in poverty. But because they are educated, to some extent, uh, they went to provincial universities anyway. They are able to question and analyze. Provincial university means not the main universities, Oxford and Cambridge. The universities in the provinces. The red brick universities as they are called. This is the time when the British government brought the concept of welfare state. The angry young men are angry with the welfare state's failure. Because the welfare state did not bring anything good. They are angry with the government at this time. They are lashing out against the hypocrisies of the highbro upper class people. And the angry young men were both novelists and playwrights. The playwrights include John Osborne. Then we have uh, Arnold Wesker. The novelists are more numerous. The novelists include Kingsley Amis, John Wayne, John Brain, etc. So we'll talk about them now. John Osborne was born in 1929. And Osborne revolutionized theatre with his look back in anger, which was performed in 1956 on 8th of May at Royal Court Theatre. John Osborne uh, came from the working class background. He started the tradition of angry young man movement. He was supported by Lawrence Olivier, the Hollywood actor. And he addressed the social inequality and uh, frustrations of the working class people at this time. Look Back in Anger is an autobiographical play set on three consecutive Sundays in a small flat, crammed flat, very claustrophobic settings in a small town in England. The protagonist, Jimmy Porter, is an angry young man. He is running a sweet shop with his friend Cliff Lewis. And he is living in this apartment with Cliff and his wife, Alison. Jimmy's wife, Alison. Jimmy is reading the newspaper and getting angry with everything in the newspaper. He sees only political decay and hypocrisy in the world around him. He is angry with the church goers, he, see, he hears church bells. Uh, anger is represented by his jazz trumpet that he plays. He is angry with his wife Alison who is an upper class woman. And she is trying to live a life that Jimmy likes but Jimmy is angry. And she is all the time ironing. Remember the drawing room comedies? Drawing room comedies represented upper class life. The superficialities of life are seen in the drawing room. But uh, angry young men movement showed 
the interior of the life the interior of working class life as represented by the ironing board so when jimmy alison and cliff are living this life to their life comes helena alison is pregnant at this time jimmy doesn't know that yet cliff knows when when helena comes she is shocked at the way jimmy is treating alison she calls for alison's father colonel redfern who comes and picks her and goes so in the play alison goes and helena takes alison's place that is the second sunday helena is now ironing and jimmy in his frustration is probably having an affair with helena it is suggested and then alison returns on the third sunday when alison returns she has had a miscarriage and in her trauma alison is like jimmy now there is a squirrel and bear game that the couple plays denoting their desire for companionship and mutual support but they are unable to do it so this is angry young man play look back in anger then there is the entertainer the protagonist archie rice is a failing music hall performer music hall used to be a typical british cultural artifact archie is the son of another music hall performer billy his father billy has seen better days but archie is living at a time when music hall is winding up nobody comes to music halls anymore television has taken over during this time archie's son they he has two sons one is uh, captured in the suez canal conflict he is a prisoner of war and he is going to be killed so this family and its traumas its deterioration as paralleling the deterioration of the country itself the society itself that is the play the entertainer then luda is a historical drama depicting the life of martin luther the protestant reformation leader he spoke against the catholic church then we have uh, another playwright arnold wesker if jimmy porter and alison their life shows the interior of the working class john osborne took us to the interior of their working class life uh, arnold wesker wesker takes us even further inside as far as the kitchen sink arnold wesker's plays show a dissection of the most intimate aspects of working class life and it is called kitchen sink realism remember guys there was a an artist a painter called john bradby who painted kitchen sinks it is from there that this title kitchen sink realism came arnold wesker has written a famous trilogy of plays arnold wesker trilogy chicken soup with barley roots and i am talking about jerusalem those are the three plays of kitchen sink realism uh, arnold wesker trilogy he has also written plays like chips with everything now in the all these plays he shows working class life in the trilogy we see the family of ronnie khan they are uh, jewish people and also communists living in the 1930s and 40s in london so kitchen sink realism is social realism that shows the intimate aspects of working class life it was david sylvester who gave the name kitchen sink realism to this group he has written later plays also which are not that famous though and he is associated arnold wesker is associated with a group of theater professionals called center 42 the autobiography of arnold wesker is called as much as i dare so these plays are very important uh 
Jimmy Potter, whom we see as a young man in Look Back in Anger, reappears in a later play by John Osborne. That play is called Deja Vu. In Deja Vu, he is a middle-aged man. Jimmy Potter appears as a middle-aged man. Then there is Sheila Delany, another kitchen sink realist. Sheila Delany is of Irish descent and her first play, uh, A Taste of Honey, is very famous. Her first play, uh, play, Taste of Honey, is also about working class lives and it became well known as a kitchen sink play. She was actually responding to the drawing room comedies of Terence Rattigan. Now guys, I will tell you about the angry young man novelist. Kingsley Amis is a major angry young man novelist. Many of you might have studied his Lucky Jim, it is very famous. Kingsley Amis' a son Martin Amis also now is very famous. Now Kingsley Amis was born in 1922. He was a comic novelist, poet and critic. And uh, he was a friend of Philip Larkin. Lucky Jim is dedicated to Philip Larkin. Now, Lucky Jim is an interesting story. It is almost uh, like your story because here Jim Dixon is a guest lecturer in a university. But Jim Dixon has a lot of frustrations because he is living in the 1950s. Being in the post-war period, he is denied a lot of opportunities. It is not easy life at that time. He has to maintain his job by pleasing his aristocratic head of the department, Ned Welch. His life has no security. He has to struggle a lot because rightfully, whatever comes to him will not come to him because he is working class. Working class people have to depend on luck not entitlement the rich people easily get everything this disparity is what creates frustration for jim dixon that is why it is called lucky jim because luck is an important theme here so even though he is trying to please ned welch at the beginning and trying to keep his job he becomes so frustrated that he imitates ned welch he does a lot of things like uh, he falls in love with Ned Welch's son's girlfriend. He messes up at a party at Ned Welch's house. So much confusion mess he creates. And deliberately he gives a last lecture in a very uh, shocking manner that he loses his job. But no problem. He gets another job. So he is angry with the system. Where working class people has to have to struggle, 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 yet get nothing. While the rich people get everything easily. He's angry and he's showing his resentment throughout the novel. So this is the campus novel Lucky Jim. It is a campus novel and a satire. Campus novel means set in a campus. Satirizing campus life. Then he has gone on, uh, Kingsley Amis has gone on to write... Other novels like that uncertain feeling, I like it here. Very importantly, the old devils. Tell me why is the old devils important? Tell me in the chat box. Because the old devils 1986 is a Booker Prize winner. Alan Weaver, the writer, is the protagonist. At this time, uh, Kingsley Amis developed an interest in science fiction and he began lecturing on science fiction etc he also wrote criticism okay now i mentioned campus novel kingsley amis is not the only writer of campus novels malcolm bradbury david lodge yes our critic david lodge he has written campus novels tom sharp howard jacobson these are other writers of campus novels now, there is another angry young man writer I want to tell you about, John Brain. Like many of the other angry young man novelists, John Brain had leftist leanings. All of them were socialist in leanings, leftist. 
but later John Brain became rightist. John Brain wrote room at the top. You know, this is my code. John Brain wrote room at the top. Well, the protagonist Joe is a young man of working class origins and he is struggling. He is affected by the second world war. The sequel to this novel is Life at the Top. Room at the Top, Life at the Top by John Brain. Will you remember? Now John Brain has also written The Crying Game which is a swinging 60s novel. Swinging 60s. You know in the 1960s there was the disco culture, rock and roll culture. It was called the swinging 60s. Another angry young man novelist is John Wayne. He was a novelist as well as a poet and professor. He was associated with the movement. Angry young man and movement are closely related. Do you know the major works by John Wayne? Hurry on down. It is a comic picaresque novel. Hurry on down. It is a story of the young man Charles Lumley. He is a graduate struggling to establish his identity. Hurry on down by John Wayne. John Wayne also wrote Strike the Father Dead. It is about the relationship between Jeremy Coleman and his father who is very disapproving of his love of jazz. Jeremy loves jazz but his father who is a professor of classics disapproves of Jeremy's love of jazz. That is the theme of Strike the Father Dead. Young Shoulders has a 17 year old protagonist, uh, Paul Waterford. This is a novel I studied for MA. Have you studied it? Young Shoulders, the story of Paul Waterford, 17 year old boy. And did you know guys, our John Wayne has written an Oxford trilogy where the rivers meet, comedies and hungry generations. Now, there is another writer we need to know from the Angry Young Men movement. And he is often prescribed in universities. It is Alan Silito. Alan Silito wrote The Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner. The writer Alan Silito was born into a poor working class family. And he worked in a, a small way in a bicycle company. And then he became a writer. He became well known as a writer, as a spokesperson of the working classes. Even in the USSR, Alan Silito was very famous. Saturday night and Sunday morning. Saturday night and Sunday morning is his first novel. That is very uh, important as well. Arthur Seaton is the protagonist, Arthur Seaton, S-E-A-T-Y-O-N. Now very important is the loneliness of the long distance runner. Here we have a juvenile delinquent or a juvenile criminal called Colin Smith as the protagonist. Colin Smith is a thief and he is put in a juvenile delinquent home. Now guys, the idea is, the upper class people will look at thieving as a horrible thing. But what other solution do the working classes have? They are suffering. They are poor. Thieving is like the only solution for them. Colin Smith and the other boys are thieves. Their thieving is a profession for them. Which is unthinkable for uh, upper class people. And... Uh, then he becomes an inmate of uh, Borstel, Ruxton Towers. Ruxton Towers is the Borstel or the prison for the juvenile delinquents. There, he, he is a minor, he is only 17 years old. There, he becomes a cross country race runner. He is an athlete, he is very good at running. Hmm. Metaphorically, it is like the working classes are always running. There is no solution for their problems. 
and there is a competition among the borstals blue ribbon prize cup it is very prestigious and the authorities warned colin smith to run for the blue ribbon prize cup colin smith is a very good runner he will be easily able to win the cup but the authorities do not understand these working class young men they don't treat them well they are frustrated these people like colin smith colin smith refuses to run the race and win it he runs but midway in front of everybody he stops because he doesn't care and of course he'll be punished for it of course he did something very rebellious but he does it because he does not want to please the authorities wow that is the story of the loneliness of the long distance runner this this is a very pessimistic novel like all the other angry young man novels there is no hope for social change it is a very bleak society a bleak universe that you see in these novels the only thing that they can do is to confirm their human spirit to remind themselves that we are human we are not animals even though the society treats them like animals so the loneliness of the long distance runner published in 1959 is a typical post war novel and a representative novel of the angry young man movement that brings us to the end of this discussion on angry young men playwrights and novelists they are a very important group in many exams you will get questions from these writers and texts so beware you should remember to read them you re you should remember to read these works read about them textual questions are important in the exams these days they will ask you from texts and they will also ask questions in order to understand whether uh you have understood the text properly whether you have been able to analyze the text properly so this is very very important okay so that brings us to the end of this video thank you everybody for your continuous support and cooperation until the next video bye bye